Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite podcast on the Citadel. You are listening to Accidentally Casual, a nerdtastic gaming podcast. My name is Minius of Minius GC, and with me is Tucker from Talking About Games. Hello. Tucker is a game designer, and I am a dude with a big voice who plays a lot of games. And together we podcast. Yeah. And have you been saying something different in the intro each time? Yes. Okay, I think I, I was wondering. I... So I have a script, and then I I just kind of do whatever I want with it. It's like the Simpsons couch gag? No, that's planned and coordinated. So uh, basically what happened is we recorded a podcast last night. And then uh, something big happened the next day. So we're going to have to tweak the way we release these. Uh, I wanted to go for a, hey, let's release it every Friday at this specific time. But instead, I think we need to record when we can and release it every week and then put it out the very next day we can when we get this sure? down we can turn I feel it like we can we can still no, i'm too tired so this is what happened the first week we did our podcast on uh the well, well not really Wednesday. console wars but the console well, I'm, I'm not counting that one that one's special oh uh the first redo in episode 14 we talked about uh microsoft and sony and then so what we did, what we were doing is we were recording and then had a day in the between and then posting it because making the video, you can run into lots of problems doing that. And also, uh, Tucker, you're a fucking squirrel and I have to edit these podcasts. Pretty much. Because <laughs> you go nuts. So, um, but basically news happened specifically on the topics we were talking about in between our recording and our release and the podcast was out of date by the time it came out. Which Oof. has happened, and the most recent one is we recorded last night. Today is a Thursday. This will come out Friday morning, and uh, and then today, Casey today, Hudson. And... Yeah, yeah, the biggest Bioware news in a couple of years, unfortunately. Uh, two major departures from the studio of Bioware. Uh, Casey Hudson, who came back in, was the creative director on the first three Mass Effect games. Uh, and was kind of brought back in to head up the studio after uh, Aaron Flynn departed. And the head director on uh, Dragon Age, Age, which might be a bigger deal as far as individually uh, affecting a game. Mark Dara, executive producer for Dragon Age, is leaving. So... Uh, and they podcast, both did it within like minutes of each other. Ba- ba- within, yeah, it was. I think these recorded and connected. So yeah, yeah. basically, uh, the podcast we recorded became uninteresting immediately. So we want to record this. So basically, the the news thing we're going to go for Fridays. Sometimes we're not going to be able to record Thursday night, which means it would come out earlier, or maybe it'll come out earlier depending. Like for instance, next week, uh, I imagine the podcast will come out on Wednesday. That would be the goal. So it'll be a, bit, a little bit quicker, but you'll get one once a week between, I guess, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And that'll be our new goal, and we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Sounds Does good. that work? We are not coordinated <clears throat> enough to hit a specific date, and I think that specific date is what's tripped us up in the past. Like, we need to hit this specific date, and that's we need to have more flexibility in that. So we're going to do that. So okay, let's so. talk about our brand new topic of the week. A um, couple weeks ago, about a month ago, uh, Bioware announced Mass Effect stuff. Mass Effect Trilogy Remaster, which should be coming out in March. Of course, that's a prediction, not a confirmation. Yeah, they, it didn't come out with any release date or anything. It was just yeah, some they re- just, yeah, pretty, they said, pretty models. I thought they um, said spring. Did they say spring? Yeah, they, yeah, they gave like an estimation. So the of spring it. that we had there is saying this has to come out by March because it has to do with EA's financial quarter, and most of the m- recent games, three out of the last four, have released in March a little bit earlier than they were ready to go. Uh, specifically, Mass Effect Three, Mass Effect Andromeda, which definitely could have used some more heat, 
or some more seasoning. We'll put it that way. And then Anthem, which really could have used some more seasoning. They all came out right away. So we're, su we're assuming that's coming out right away. Yeah. And then there's a new Mass Effect game after that. So we got real excited. We got so excited that we got our old podcasters together and they started recording with us. And now I feel like all that momentum's gone. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Mass Effect community seems kind of upset for obvious reasons. I mean, these are two these are two big people that uh, were with Bioware, but I also am not too concerned with it, just simply because like they both kind of talked about how they've been in the industry for a while. They've worked at Bioware for an extensive amount of time that. You know, they they just kind of want to work on other things. Oh no, it, it's great. It, it makes like, sense on their part, and it yeah, makes like, sense. I, I don't think it, it. It looked like the when you put Casey Hudson back on the team and in charge, the first thing he said is, "I want to work on Mass Effect again," and I didn't believe him. I'm like, "There's no way they're doing that." And then he came through, and they're like, "Hey, listen, here's some Mass Effect stuff. It's coming out within six months, and we also got another one." So I'm like, "Oh wow." He's going through there, and now he is going to leave, which yeah, puts well, those fair. games in someone else's hands. And obviously, there's we have no idea what's behind that move, and we would have to speculate. Uh, my speculation, and I have absolutely no evidence for it, is that uh, he wants way more creative freedom than you can get in a big-time studio, big-time owned studio at least system where you got a bunch of executives that are very concerned with the funding and, and that's their job. That's, that's what they should be. But yeah, it's a lot. I mean, that, that seems reasonable because he did say that he wanted to work on more like independent projects, I think is what he said. When you're working for yourself, you have a lot more freedom than when you're working for someone else. And that's basically yeah, the biggest thing. But, and there's been a number that, for instance, a lot of major Bioware people have left over the last five six years to pursue other stuff and this is i want to say the last of the old guard not entirely the last but it really feels like there are there's no one left from those heyday well, mass no, who, uh no no one major person, left who's the person that's running uh the mass effects remaster they did not say well no i i, I read it did you really? I, well, no, 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 they've like so you're gonna uh, they're say, not I read heading it. it. Now I'm going to search for it and make you wait on the podcast and not get to it. Uh, potentially. Yeah, that that we got to stop doing that, man. Oof. Um, <laughs> uh, Mike Gamble. Gamble's gone. What? Isn't he? Uh, part of a message from Laura. I'm not going to try to pronounce my last name. Uh, Chief Studios Officer from Electronic Arts at the bottom of oh, her no, you're message. Right. Yeah, no, she he says is... we recently announced Mass Effect: The Legendary Edition, and Mike Gamble is leading a team hard at work on that franchise. Oh, on that franchise's future. So Mike Gamble's yeah. not no, uh, leading he's... the Legendary Edition. He's he's leading. Uh... There, uh, he might be the the favorite to be creative director on that. Uh, yeah, new game. So that, that uh, there's a bit of a misinterpretation on my end. Th that's a uh, that's good. I uh, always figured like so. For instance, it's a remaster is probably going to be more of an upgraded graphics paint job, and that doesn't require as much creativity as building yeah. a brand new project. I mean, just a remaster in general, I guess. It's, it's yeah. Would, I mean, it, it doesn't, you don't, doesn't require new ideas usually. That's, yeah. that's not entirely true. By the way, Mike, Mike Gamble is fo followed by the BioAware podcast and Andromeda Nerds podcast. How about that? Yeah, but I wonder if so, former or Eric, former Biofan, is still he, running. But this. so Mike Gamble might be the only big name person the, still the, there. The two guys, Aaron Flynn, is also gone, right? The two people who are most responsible for the original Mass Effect trilogy, Drew Carpishan was the lead writer, and he ducked out about midway through the second game. Uh, he said that he wanted to move from Edmonton to somewhere warm. I 100% believe that. I don't believe there is anything else in that. You know how cold Edmonton is, man? Uh, it's Canada. So No, it's, it's not just Canada. Canada's a big country. It's 
in the middle of the plains, way the fuck up north. Like, oh. and it is cold. It is cold. So that was his idea is he didn't want to do winters anymore. He specifically said that. And then Casey Hudson, who was the creative director on all three. So now those two guys have been gone and a bunch of other guys that we mentioned uh, are also out there. And the only guy left apparently is going to be Mike Gamble from the major big names. I'm sure there are still guys that are there. So that changes the expectations on this game, I think. Uh, a lot of the firepower is gone. I, yeah. I mean, yeah, they, they definitely had a massive impact on the franchise. And obviously the community and stuff are sad that they are leaving. But this does now allow for new people to come in. And new ideas doesn't mean bad ideas. And a I want to be on board with you about that. Well, uh, that, that's that's an assumption, not assumption, because I don't want to use the word assumption, but that is a thing I see a lot of people kind of jump to, and I, I understand of like, you know, this doesn't have the same people leading it as it has before, so it's going to be something different, and sure, but that doesn't mean it is bad. I mean, it can be bad, but like, we don't know anything much about the new Mass Effect, and... We, I mean, you know, we can see what comes out. From yeah, it. no, it was all speculation. I was just very, very excited to see Casey Hudson oh. be at the at the top of. Oh, that. absolutely, and so and it was great because of his impact with the uh, series before. But you know, we can see how it goes from here. Like for you know, for what it's worth, and I can't say because we know basically nothing about this new Mass Effect game. He didn't, and it also didn't seem like anything was malicious with what anyone's saying it seems like things the, there's, are fine even if it even the, if there's something really bad going on there's no way they say well, anything about yes, it yes but you would still kind of maybe get some maybe i bet well so this news broke of it, but, recently like literally within yeah, a couple I, hours i could, I could be eating my words you know yeah as this i is imagine releasing. if there's if something went wrong we'll know in the next week or which two. that's fine if i if i'm wrong i'm wrong then but and then we'll get we'll know, get to that when it goes I just, I just feel like, you know, from where we are right now, it's like, you know, just wait, see, see what comes up a little bit. Don't, don't start the anchoring effects of being in a negative spot with the idea of this. And then that being your baseline for it, because I, I, the- I think in truth, it's just way too early. It, it, I don't think that the Mass Effect game is that far along. The new one. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I mean, who knows for how long it's been in pre-pro, how, why they could be keeping it quiet. I mean, I've had a theory for why we haven't... Go, theory. Like, like yeah, of why we haven't been hearing much about the new Mass Effect or Dragon Age, as well as other things like GTA and so on, and is, is because they're waiting for Cyberpunk to be released. They not just like competition wise, but they want attention, to see attention wise. No, well, not not attention wise. They want to see what it does. This game is touting itself as a massive game changer, and everyone seems to be in agreement that this is going to be a big game. That a lot of love, a lot of effort, and everything has been put into this. It's been game on changers got to be a bit much though, right? Game game Maybe. changers. That's huge. I, mean, I just figured it'd be just a massive game. That one but, is for sure. But I think that people are, they don't want to announce too much with GTA 6 or the next Mass Effect or like any big open world RPG kind of game because Cyberpunk is coming out soon. They want to see what it does. And if anything that they do is similar, like if they tout one mechanic and it turns out Cyberpunk also does it then the their mechanic that comes out later is going to feel a bit more rusty or they're going to have to change it so it feels different they're going to have to would they would have to alter it around a bit because you know wouldn't want the games to be too similar so you have a little bit of an inside track has have you ever experienced that with any projects you've worked on where they're like hey let's wait to see what this other game does i mean the, the game studios absolutely have things of like what the what their competitors are and they do look at 
what does our competitor, what do they do that was really well? What did they do that uh, the community didn't like that much? Is there a way that we could improve on that? But it's not too much. Like, that. that is a lot of, there is research, like a research department and all that kind of stuff that would be done to when designing a game. And I feel like Cyberpunk is a game that uh, Rockstar is going to be looking at, Bioware is going to be looking at, because they're going to want to see what it does well, what it doesn't do well, and if like if there's any way that they can change that. So if they make any announcement now, it's it's a lot more difficult to take it back once it's out there. So they could just be waiting for this big bombshell of a game to drop yeah. and see how it goes. Yeah, all they've announced is there's a game, and they took one picture... Which I mean, you that, can that is, read into as much as you want in that picture, but it really doesn't say anything. That is absolutely my theory with GTA 6, what at it, the very least. GTA but what, 6 what it says theory, with that Mass Effect but... picture is uh, there's a ship that you fly around and explore with. Uh, yeah, that's I mean, a Mass could, Effect it, <laughs> That's it. it. I mean, I, like, you know, it, it could be not the reason why, but it could be part of the reason like I, I feel like it's it's a reason why GTA Six there might be a bit quiet on that as well as how much money GTA Five makes the thing that's going on with Red Dead Online like there's a lot of mount a little a lot of what is it Ma uh, mountains out of molehills yeah there's a lot of molehills being made that create this mountain but this I is think, like a theory that I have of, I think that it is beneficial to not announce a game too far out. Or Absolutely. not really start hyping. So when when you announce something, it's kind of on the clock. So this isn't really more of an announcement. It's more of a there's going to be a game. And then once you really start displaying this stuff, you have a year to put it out. Ideally less. I remember with uh, what you're talking about GTA. GTA, basically the reason we'll get into that, that's the biggest gaming franchise out there. And it's not close. With GTA 5... They announced that they, a few years ahead. They announced it, but they didn't show anything yeah, for a while. I think they did. At, at like but, an E3, and then they, but they, the they first tossed teaser. it out, and it was out real quick. And financially, that game did better than any other game in history. Yeah. I remember made. like normally like for a lot of companies, they'll start and they'll say, oh, we have a game coming out, and they'll ramp it up over the course of like 18 months. And I believe most of that was crunched into six months, if I'm remembering it correctly. This is a while ago. Was it 2013? When did GTA 5 come out? 2013 is when GTA 5 came out. And I yeah. think it was announced in, or I think stuff was shown at 2011. Yeah, but, but they didn't really ramp up the marketing for it. So I, I think if from a standpoint of making a game successful, it's beneficial to not talk about it until it's almost ready to go. Well, I mean, that's, well, absolutely, just because you have a much better finished product. I mean, you're much closer to that. So, so that, that would be my, my assumption is the reason we're getting almost nothing from the new Yeah, Bioware the game first is that it, trailer do... for Grand Theft Auto V was November 2nd, 2011. Now, there is a YouTube channel that I don't know if you've ever heard of, but it's kind of interesting. It's called... Game, I, I'm just going to pronounce it as gamers, but it's G V M E R S. They do um, kind of documentary style videos based around video games. Like they have stuff on uh, GTA, on the Grand Theft Auto series, on uh, Max Payne, uh, the Silent Hill franchise, and it's like uh, 50 minutes or 40 minutes, just like a short documentary based around that video game it's kind of cool like i i absolutely recommend like i have backed way out of up. the youtube gaming scene since i had a channel so uh that does sound interesting though yeah other we ones as well send There's a link on that bunch of channels to recommend so to, to kind of wrap up the topic a little bit though uh you're not that concerned at all um i i, th I think that this as a standalone event isn't too much to be concerned about i th i i mean yes it could be a little worrying but it's also that i from from working in the industry too like working on games 
it's a, it's incredible. It's in, it's insanely fun working on video games. You're working in the entertainment industry. You're you're having fun with that, but it does get to you. And I've only worked in it in a few years, and I still want to work in the industry. But these guys have worked for twenty something years at Bioware, or or at least just in the gaming industry for twenty years. So it's like, yeah, I could kind of see if they want to take a little step back and kind of work on their own thing it makes plenty of sense from their so, personal standpoint it's more of yeah, a concern for the future projects i would say i'm conflicted with it because i i can see from both standpoints of it can be really concerning that these lead people are gone as this series is coming out that we're excited for and everything like the concern behind that of it's going to be something different now it's a lot more uncharted waters that we're going into but that doesn't mean a bad thing that's just my optimism which i'm optimism too much optimism to man fault. how dare you try to cheer us up this year i am optimistic to a how fault. dare you do but, that uh, uh, everything but is also miserable. from just you know working in the industry for 20 years you know you get that the thing that concerns me the most is that they both quit on the same day and i can think of two possible explanations uh, the one that is actually probably more likely and no one's going to talk about is uh, these contracts might be ending and they're just not re-upping for the next year. Yeah, and I guess they, and, my guess is so also they, they talk to each other a lot. My guess is they're good friends with each other. So one of them might have been feeling like leaving and the other one was probably like on the fence and was like, hey, yeah, you know, they, like our contract, contracts are up. And, and then yeah. we just won't re-sign and it happens on the same day. Uh, yeah, the so other, I, I could what see it that. looks like from a completely uninformed standpoint is that there was some serious friction and they quit, and that's that's where I think a lot of the concern is going to come from. Yeah, friction I mean, either part, within the studio or with Electronic Arts, which is and n I have no evidence for that at all. Well, something that could back that theory a little bit is the fact that both of them said that they're going off to work on new things. They didn't specify anything. They Isn't that what everyone says though when they quit a game in the gaming or studio in the gaming uh, industry? For the mo I mean from my understanding, I'm, yeah, or just experience. Should of, we yeah, should we wait for someone to say I'm going off to sit on my ass for 4 years? Well, I mean like if they're saying, <laughs> "Oh, I'm leaving BioWare to work at Bungie or to, you know, work at Microsoft or whatnot or something like that." It's like, "Okay, they're going from one company to another." But both of them are just saying, yeah, we're going to work on, fut on like, you know, we we're going to work on a project or we're, we, uh, we're excited to see where our future goes from here. It's like just some of that uncertainty. Humans are phenomenal at filling in uncertainty with, with whatever comes to our mind. We are very creative animals. And so I can see some people being like, you know, if they don't have a place to that they are directly going at, as they're leaving Bun uh, Bioware, then, you know, maybe they didn't leave on the best of terms because they there's no plan that they're directly announcing. If it if they were the first people after a string of very successful games to leave then i would i would assume it's more along the lines of uh everybody's in a good mood and yeah. this is just people moving on uh, the fact that it's come out after multiple unsuccessful games and well bioware's uh, just a been lot quiet of people lately leaking like, out of the studio yeah well i mean bioware's just been quiet lately in the aspect of like they had anthem and they've been kind of doing things with that from my understanding but they haven't behind, released anything. They they say that. they're working on it behind the scenes. It's not going to be ready, and there hasn't actually been stuff releasing. Really? There haven't even been, like, updates? No, nothing. Or... Absolutely Just, nothing. I mean, even bug fix updates? like there That been... I'm not sure about. But uh, I remember reading a story, like, they left the Christmas light decorations on uh, for, like, three months after Christmas, and, and not this year, but the previous year, like, 2018 they just Man, left it up speaking of that holidays are coming up which means video games are going to start doing holiday 
uh, themed events. Yeah, this is way too off subject. I don't care. Uh, let's finish. Oh, what we're I mean, about. there's a new. No, I'm off. I'm starting to cut you off now. The last yeah. podcast that is not going to be aired was just a disaster. <laughs> But it was another like topic we could talk about. But uh, we're not done with this topic. I thought we were. No. <laughs> I just want to summer. I'll, I'll sum it up, and then you can talk about whatever stupid thing you want to talk about. Sure. Okay. So uh, from a standpoint, to summarize, uh, I'm more concerned for Dragon Age of the Mass Effect on this. Uh, really? Mark Even Dara though leaving. you don't play Dragon Age, you're and more concerned with Dragon Age than Mass I Effect? I think if you're going to look from an effect on how it affects games, I think Mass Effect's okay. not far enough along to be really affected. I think the trilogy remaster doesn't really get affected by this kind of stuff. And yeah, you don't the, think that that's going to And, and the anything? fact that, you know, Dragon Age has lost a huge lead for the second time. And Dragon Age is big from the standpoint of turning the reputation of Bioware back around by coming out with a, a big-time title, which... The new yeah. Dragon Age is capable of. I don't know if I would expect it to, but it is capable of. And the Mass Effect remake or remaster could do well, and that could put Bioware in good grace, but a new IP, well, not new, not IP, but a new game, not a remaster, that is a good yeah, game, that, would, would be that, much better as well. It would be much better, yeah. Um, Christian Daly, who worked uh, with Blizzard Properties, is now leading the Mass Effect project. I don't know much about him. I do know that Blizzard's had some good shit in the past. Yeah, I mean, they they've also have had some issues, but that was more... I mean, that, that wasn't game-wise. I mean, they have had issues game-wise with some World of Warcraft uh, DLCs, but some of their other issues were more along the lines of publishing and, like, censoring and stuff like that. All right, Tucker, I will release you on a tangent. Go. So, uh, holidays with holiday seasons coming up, how you were talking about Anthem having their uh, holiday thing on for a few months. So, uh, video games are going to be coming out with their holiday theme things. What are some? What are some of your favorite ones that have had co- or that have been out? Absolutely nothing. Really? You I don't, don't like them? I don't like those crossovers at all. Oh, you are a Grinch. No, it's not what I want in my games. I've got that shit on the outside. I don't but need more stuff. But it's fun. Like when they no, have like little game modes or something. Like, like I don't uh, care in the slightest. I the, don't care Re- in the slightest. Siege, Rainbow Six Siege had this Halloween trick-or-treating one that was pretty fun. I don't uh, want that in the game. Warzone had a zombies mode with Halloween. That was cool. April Fools in War Thunder at one point had a snail that fired electricity out and it would like fire at airplanes and stuff. That was awesome. Even in games that I play for a really 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 long time, those events that coincide with real life stuff, I don't get into it at all. What if it's even simple things like GTA Online that just had it snow? Where it's like Christmassy like that where it like they it was more of a texture change of online. That seasonal thing is is that would be more okay. I don't want to see fucking Santa Claus running around. God, I I have so much fun with the seasonal things, and one that broke my heart is Dead by Daylight. Their Halloween event wasn't fun, and it's like you would think a horror look, look, look at that, video man. game. The even in the podcast that we didn't do, you stopped bringing that up, and absolutely back in there, absolutely. Because are you I, still playing that every day? Yes. One thing we've established is that you juggle many, many games at the same time, and I am completely incapable of that. Absolutely. Like, today, I have played Dead by Daylight and City Skylines as well. I occasionally pop into that one and uh, some Lego Harry Potter. So I can only play one type of one game at a time because I lose the controls for the game. Oh. Just little hitches and stuff. So if I'm playing a melee combat game, I can only play one melee combat game at a time. I can't play a couple. I can play a shooter and a melee combat game, and I can toss in a strategy RPG, a slower thing, and that's the most amount of games I can juggle. I usually want to play just one game. Oof, that's the way that, I like it. There are times go, where I, would... I love diving into a game like that. You just dive all the way in, and you know you get to the point where your controls, you don't even think about it. It's just perfectly attached to your hands. And the fewer games you play, the easier it is to get to that state. 
Yeah, there are, there are times where I would play two games at the same time. Like when I had a laptop, I would sometimes play Prison Architect or City Skylines or Hearthstone aren't, aren't or those, something like those that. Those are slower games where you can wait on shit, right? Well, you well yeah. Well, Hearthstone is a uh, card game, but yeah, City Skylines and Prison Architect. But I play those games and then I play like another game on my Xbox and I just like bounce between them like that. It depends on the type of game highly. Yeah, I still like to to focus more on stuff. All right, uh, you know what? You know what I've decided to do? I've decided to add some stuff, and then we'll we'll throw it back together. Uh, All right. Did you watch the full Beaver Moon Eclipse on Monday? The wait, the what? The full Beaver Moon Eclipse. Beaver, like the animal. Yeah. Moon Eclipse. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Neither did I, and I saw in the thing they started doing this with every single full moon. They've added like a name to it, so this is a the a beaver moon. Did you know a beaver moon would exi- exist? No. It sounds really dirty. Yeah, it does. It really does. So apparently, beavers disappear for the winter, and that's why they call it a beaver moon. And this Not time that, there was it... a partial eclipse, which isn't even a real eclipse. It was a. a not even a half eclipse. It's just uh, the color changes slightly. Completely uninteresting. Not so just that, but it's kind of nice how beavers are just like, they'll see running water and they're like, hey, got to do something about that. There was a dude who like was rehabbing a beaver. Uh, and I don't know if it was, it could be a, a lady dude. But so the beaver's in the house and just started piling up all the chairs. That's awesome. Beavers, is, is, I, I, is what is what? Well, what is the psychology behind why a beaver does that? Why does this animal see running water and go, "I gotta stop that. Someone's gotta save that water, or someone's I, gotta do something." Like, I mean, there. It's they're, not a conscious decision. It's just internally wired stuff, man. But it's that animal. You don't see foxes doing that or pelicans ma- blocking up these but waters. There are a lot of animals have beavers. like they. I if it's, it's not advantageous for an animal in the wild to sit there and do nothing. Sure, they always but, want to. So but why there are do things they that are hardwired to build a, a home and build security, and that's what they're doing. And maybe they just like the water. They just like getting it's, splashed on. I don't know enough about be- uh, that kind of beaver. Ah, I would, I would. I'd watch a documentary on beavers. I watched a documentary on sharks and stuff that, on with Netflix. There's a documentary that's on sharks. There was like 600 different types of sharks, and there's one that is lives to be a few hundred years old that lives in Gre- uh, like the Greenland waters, up in Greenland where it's freezing. And it is blind. It has a unique bacteria that grows on its eye that will eat yeah. away at its eye until the shark is blind. And it, 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 this bacteria, if I'm, recall, if I'm remembering correctly, it only lives on this shark. But this shark also lives to be a few hundred years old. It eats rarely because it doesn't uh, find Sharks much- can smell stuff, though, pretty fucking good. Like Oh, yeah. You and don't need it, it's it's very close. No one can smell like that. Can you sm- have you ever tried to smell underwater? Uh, no, that's called don't drowning. do that. <laughs> it's, it's called drowning. You'll drown. But and there's like a bunch of other sharks. Yeah, documentaries are awesome. There's also uh, to talk more about astronomy thing, which makes more sense for the podcast that we're doing. Uh, actually, a really cool conjunction coming up where Jupiter and Saturn are going to be on top of each other. So you I don't check know that anything out. of astrology. I don't know what that means. Does that mean well, like it only happens people once are going to be happier? Years. For... They'll be in. A, it's not astrology. It's astronomy. They, from our position in the solar system, you look at them and they're going to look like they're almost occupying the exact same spot in the sky, where in reality uh, Saturn is just behind Jupiter. That's going to be some cool space pictures. It, yeah, it, it it only happens once every twenty years, and apparently has not been. They have not been this close to each other since the 1600s. And then the next time they'll be this close together is actually, I mean, it'll be in like 60 years or something like that. So, And when is that? It's on the solstice, December 21st. Okay. So that's, that's, that's going to be awesome from a standpoint. Have you ever been to Seattle? Or, um, yes. Uh, have you ever heard of Mopop? 
No. Mopop is a thing here in Seattle. It's the Museum of Pop Culture. It is okay. incredible. It's obviously closed and stuff with the virus that's been going on. But before the virus happened, um, they had an exhibit that was on Minecraft. And it, it was a museum exhibit where you walk through the areas and there are life-size Minecraft things. There was like uh, animals and it would describe some of the facts in games as well as some of the design behind it and what they do. There was a computer area where a bunch of people were playing Minecraft. A bunch, uh, It was a bunch of kids playing Minecraft, but that was kind of cool. Dude, you, you just completely blew my fucking mind. I'd never considered the fact that video games are going to be in fucking museums at some oh, point. Oh, I mean, there was more for than that. For old people. Um, oh, my God. The, oh, that's so weird. It, well, I Oh, mean, my brain is hurting. This ah. museum, it did also have an exhibit that was like a bunch of guitars from famous musicians. That makes sense. Um, but I'm just never considered video games as a museum quality type thing. It had you're a gonna, tattoo. You're going to fucking go in there and they're going to be playing fucking Tetris or some shit. Well, uh, it had an indie game exhibit. Part of their thing was an indie game exhibit where you could go in and there were games like Minute or Inside or Fez or other um, indie small games. Um and it, there's like little stories about them of uh, the few developers that made them and how much this game made and so on like that. There's uh, horror movies down there um, or at the like basement area of the museum. There are horror movie icons, uh, things from the sets of the Friday the 13th movie or outfits uh, like Freddy Krueger's claws from Nightmare on Elm Street. How and many people listening to this podcast actually care about what you're talking about right now i care i i'm aware of that <laughs> but you're not listening to what you're saying <laughs> no but in another part of the uh oh, the you're, you're just area as well. go. i'm trying to cut you off so i'm gonna cut i'm gonna be more of a dick to tucker on the podcast Oof. because this... i need to i need to head him off more often and, and the museum and so itself that's, that's what i'm looks doing funky so tucker it... you are now you are now officially done on this <sighs> subject Okay. You're done. You're done. I'll send you a picture of what the museum looks like. And I'm not going to look at it. <gasps> On purpose. That's heartbreaking. Just to hurt your feelings. That's that's hurting my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So next week on the show, even though uh, basically some really fucking cold water got thrown on it, uh, we're going to go over everyone's Mass Effect ideas. We got a bunch of them. And we're going to speculate on the new game and talk, really just look into game design ideas and how the series can continue in the best possible way. Would I be able to throw in a cyberpunk theory that I have, or would, would, should I do that theory right now? I think you should do that theory right now. So I think, and I, I, I think I've said this before, but I want to I put this theory out now so I am 100% sure that I have this theory out before the game comes out. Jo Johnny Silvercage is alive. It's, he it's silver hand. Silver hand. He is Come on, alive. dude. He's got he's got a fucking hand. First of all, that's more of a philosophical debate in my opinion because you don't need a body to be alive. Oh no a, no no! He's alive. Like you're talking about, like he's got a body somewhere. Yes, he is. I I, think I figured that that's a copy alive. of his. If you have a copy of your mind in a computer chip and it's active, in my opinion, you are alive. Well, so I think he, he is alive. controlling that ship. He is alive remotely, and he okay. wants to take over that city. He wants to be the one in charge, and he is kind of oh, using I, he your character city, in a man. puppet manner. Well, he he is alive. That I am I am sure he is alive because I just feel like that's going to be the, uh, like one of the big twists at the end. Is Johnny's alive? He's the villain, and he's been the big puppet master that's been using you to do his bidding in a sense i feel like it's there's going to be so, something of that and what it's is your have, evidence for this because this is technology based that it's going to try to give some sort of message of tech not of like uh technology being used against you to go against humanity like a thing of that so uh, ba basically, power. it's all speculation. There's no actual and, evidence. Well, and also the fact it's Keanu Reeves. I mean, 
Yes, they're using almost him as a always main plays person. the good guy in a movie. But yes, they're using him as a main person. But they're going to use him in like a big fashion of it, and yeah. they have him as Johnny Silverhand. But like, I they're I feel like they're going to do that. The I fact that he like likely he's going the to city be twenty the bad years, guy. fifty years before the game uh, takes place makes me think he doesn't want to take over anything. Well, I mean, I, he's probably I think more he's interested alive. in killing as many executives but as possible i think he's alive that's because fine. there's no body they, they haven't found a from my understanding yeah because the, the, the one percent of research i have done man. the one percent of research i have done so i'm going in this with also knowing nothing at all i, I this is a theory i'm pulling straight out of my ass of just an idea it's, it's as a very, game very designer that that's where everything that you say comes and from everything for the most part but it's it's just like there's no body and that is such a thing with story writing. There's no body being shown. They can come back. And I just feel like that's going to happen. I am, I am confident with it, but I also feel like it's nuts. But I'm com- I feel like I'm confident with it. Okay. So if you're right, uh, we're all going to accuse you of spoiling the game. Sure. Not give you credit for coming up with the correct... Cri- Correct. No, 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 no. It, it's it's because yeah. you know I've worked in the industry, so I had insiders and I leaked it because Way I, to I can't bang be a fun shit person. while you're talking, man. Come on, oh, try to be soup. more professional. Well, that was my soup. I was stirring it around a little bit. Yeah, we're recording. <laughs> you could hear that. <laughs> Hell yeah! <sighs> All right. Normally, when you do dumb stuff like that, I have to edit it out, and I'm going to stop doing that. Oh, I didn't even know you edited that stuff out. Yeah, I have to. Oh, I get like way too uh, anal about this stuff. Okay, <laughs> I thought yeah. you, I thought you, you want should. That stuff in. <laughs> you should see how much time I spent on the visuals for this podcast, which nobody is going to look at at all. But I really cared, and I'm not even going to look at it after I'm done with it. Oof. This is why there are no audio versions coming. I want to finish. The, I'm not even done yet. It's bad because I'm not good at that kind of stuff. So. so. Well. All right, I mean, uh, yeah. we're going to see how seamless... We have more stuff for them to look at. We're going to see how seamless this cuts together with what we recorded uh, last time, but these podcasts are going to come out in a different manner. It'll be fine. It'll work. All right, I want to run through some of the rest of the stuff we have here. Uh, I have a couple questions to ask you, and I might, depending on your answers, I might change what I'm doing. Oh, yippee. So uh, Cyberpunk's coming out in like 10 days or something like that. Yes, the 10th. Or like a week. Which is, in fact, next out, week. So it's coming out on a Thursday. Yeah. Uh, is, w- why a Thursday? I, I don't know. Because typically, from my, like, games would come out on, tu- well, they used Tuesday, to come out on Tuesday Tuesdays. Tuesday or Friday. They used to it be It might Tuesdays. be European games sometimes come out on weird days, so they might be just trying to hit everything like that. Maybe? Because, I mean, like, so, yeah. yeah. The, the first question is... Um, I don't know what system to play it on. I want to play it on PC, but I'm really garbage. PC with will probably be the best way S- to play it. But my PC isn't as powerful as my PS5. It's, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> but you'll also be able to like do modding and stuff. I mean, I'm going to play it on Xbox just because achievements. But um, yeah, like that would that would be the other reasons. Eventually, if the multiplayer comes out, I'll, I'll want to play that with my friends on. I can imagine on multiplayer will have crossplay. I cannot. I cannot imagine yeah, that. It, well, that's very possible. Well, I, does GTA have cross? I thought it didn't. It do, it doesn't. No, I don't think. I don't think it has cross. I haven't played GTA Online in a while, but I don't think it has cross play. So yeah, I, I don't think it does. Maybe either. Cyberpunk I, might not. I don't think it would. In fact, um, when it comes to competitive games. Uh, I like playing those on consoles because there's a hell of a lot less cheaters on there. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that so, is definitely. And yeah. so when there's crossplay going over, you're just like, uh. Like, I remember playing, I mean, the game we talked about on the show last week, Spellbreak. Yes. Uh, on crossplay and running into PC gamers, and you're just like, oh my God, how do you fuck you deal with these guys? You don't. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. Anyway, except there are lots of bots running around. You get to kill those. Those are like some... Which they've, they've taken the bots out of that game. Have they? Yeah, and they've also added a uh, clash, like a 9v9 game mode. 
That that I went enjoy. That is fine. I, I think I'll end up going back to that a couple times. We should play Spellbreak at some point. Yeah. Could do that. All right. So uh basically I don't know what I, I'm I'm gonna end up getting in on both and changing my mind and playing it. Oh multiple times. I'm I'm getting it on Xbox and then I think that'll transfer just, over onto PC using the Microsoft. I just store. love like those first person RPGs. Uh, I do much better. We, I mean, I mentioned on the show earlier, but first-person games uh, do much better first-person games with the keyboard and mouse because you can well, I mean, look around a lot quicker. E- yes. Uh, what I'm, what and- I'm going to do, and you, you can predict how I'm going to do this, I'm going to play Doom Eternal on my, head, on, on my PC and see if I can keep up with it. And then if I can, then I'll play it on PC. Well, there's That's my current plan. There's certain pros and cons with a controller and PC or, or keyboard and mouse. When you're shooting, you cannot get more accurate than using Within your mouse. mouse. That is your yeah. pinpoint accuracy with that. However, when you're moving, WASD or the arrow keys, if you're some kind of masochist, um, with WASD, those are 100% inputs. It is key up, key down, and then yeah. same. And it is also single so directional. So you can't you can't move with as much precision. Yeah. While with controllers you can't do that so it is a trade-off of like how do you do you move more or do you want to aim more yeah i i don't know i'm gonna end what i'm gonna end up doing is buying on pc getting angry then rebuying it on playstation and playing it on playstation do you think it'll be vr skyrim and fallout are in vr do you think eventually it'll be in vr maybe a, a few more they got, games. They, more they games might have VR? too much stuff going on at this point at CD Projekt Red. It, uh, yeah. Also, it might it might be a bit disorienting some of the things, but Fallout. I don't and think Skyrim so. I think it work. Have VR, and it, 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 it depends on the mo- the way you move. I mean, we haven't played the game yet, so we'll, this yeah. will, let's bring this back up later. And uh, Star Wars Squadrons it. is also. I know that one was VR. That one I could see on VR. That one. That, that one actually might be very enjoyable. Really, that would be really um, well. There's also a uh, Star the, Citizen. And with the Hotas can like can I would love that. Yeah. Uh with a thruster joystick. Oof. Yeah. That we Which I, which I will do at some point. I can't wait till we get like haptic suits with VR in like five years. Yeah. That's gonna be so I, I don't I think you're estimating too much. That's gonna be way more out. Really? Because we I mean yeah. we've already That's had, just too had like three sixty di- uh directional oh. things that you can stand on that like keep you center i mean yeah there's a very big difference between being able to make something and being able to make money off something yeah well i'm also just thinking of like the the way that we explode in technology like cell phones they were around for a while and stuff like that and then they just blew up in growth of uh yeah what they can do i'm just thinking when you when you say five years i'm thinking 25 years but maybe I mean, we got Elon just, Musk just putting because, brain like, chips in people or in sheep right now. It's going to be really, really expensive, and you got to be able to make it affordable enough for the random person. That so. is definitely where there could be some difference. Like, I think we might have the technology or something for it in five years, but I don't think it'll be commercially yeah, I think, available. Yeah, the technology will be there, but the accessibility will not be there. Kind of like we have augmented, we have augmented reality devices right now, and we've had them for a few years. But they are not commercially available, and AR is way more wild than VR. Could be, so, yeah. Well, I mean, you could can. Well, that's well, that's VR one thing. Is, I, I want to combine those with the headset that you can wear and then walk around. But that's the AR. Headset that, needs that is to be what smarter. AR is. AR is augmenting. Yeah, I, the I reality. know. But but you're talking about you'd have to have it like, uh, get a whole bunch of technology like Tony Stark into a glasses. really small amount of space. Yeah, no. But, but I'm thinking something that you could really. Call over. This is something else to talk about there. Uh, my second cyberpunk question. I don't know what oh. class or background story to pick. Uh, I'll pick whatever. I I, don't know. I, I haven't really I looked actually, much into what they are. I'm just, okay. I, I, I was hoping that you would tell me what to do, and then I would incri- and then I would rule that out. Ha-ha! And then do something <laughs> else. <laughs> that was my goal. You're like, oh, you should be a nomad. Or like, okay, I'm well, not going to play nomad. I think I'm... There's one that's like a businessman. I'm not doing that one. Okay, that's the one I'm, I was most looking at, just because I think that would give you a, a distinct advantage. Yeah, you probably have a, like a, a financial benefit in the beginning. 
but I I well, want it's, to. It's more of basically, as far as I can tell, the only thing it does is open up dialogue and. I mean, I want to. Trees th- I'm going to immerse my character as like a street criminal who is like by themselves a loner so who is like Thane who does like assassination sneaky I don't know how much of that you can do other than I mean like as far as the actual background on the character there is a street kid one and that's yeah. it has they're distinctly different openings yeah but you they're I like mean di- distinct in quotes I think they all bring you to the same end point in, in a sense yeah. which I mean that makes sense it, but it is it is absolutely cool that they do have different options of it but yeah that's okay so that the fact that uh you said don't on the uh the business one it's the yeah i just feel like that one would be boring the nomad one is like you know you're coming into a new place and that one i kind of i i i think i don't i think i'd like it but i feel like i'd rather be a part of the city than not a part of the city yeah to start and that one seems like it'd be the most expository too if you're a nomad when you're going into the city and everyone's like oh you don't know about blank well let me tell you a small <laughs> book about him which because you know people in mass yeah, effect can... and stuff would just be expository with the slightest thing of i've never heard of that oh let me tell you of this entire presentation on the battle of 1984 all right so we'll we'll get in more into that later um Anthony has another cyberpunk question. Anthony uh, wants to know if Siri will be in cyberpunk as an Easter egg, possibly. Why Siri specifically? So I suppose this is not a question for you. Uh, Siri is a character from The Witcher. Oh, she has okay. the that ability. Makes more sense. Cirilla. I I should have gone with Cir- I mean Siri I th- before the other thing, because she can trans. Uh, she can go to any world she wants to, in in fiction. But, uh, like, just open up a gateway and go through, like, Elizabeth and yeah. Bioshock Infinite? Ba- basically, she can travel to wherever. Cool. You know, specifically going to gunship lights. Like, I, I, in the book, she goes to the King Arthur's Court world, and uh, she can... So, th- th- Have you played... This is not a question The Bioshock us. series. As a first-person game, No. On purpose. I, I know that those are first-person shooters, but I thought that maybe the Bioshock series might be a, like unique enough because that, I mean, er, like the the ending for Bioshock is as much as a common known thing in the gaming community as the like Luke, I am your father. Or it's not even Luke, I am your father. The quote is No, I am your father. But yeah, like that from Star Wars, the ending of Bioshock. So I didn't know if that may have been a okay. game you played. Yeah, no, that I I first person really. I mean, I mean, I might have. I'm gonna have a hard time with Cyberpunk well, because I mean, of the first person thing. Who knows? It might be an awakening for you. No, it definitely will not be. Oh, I've boo. tried many, many times. Throw just throw a wet uh, towel. But on ba- that. basically, uh, I actually like this idea. I just uh, if she if Siri was in the crowd somewhere and like makes eye contact with you and walks off. I think if she actually talks to you, it might be too much. It to it would have to Anthony's be a cut question. scene. I feel like have her maybe be in the background of a bar. Yeah. Like just have her be in the, like just there briefly. It makes me also I wonder think like fans would get a huge kick out of that. I, we there's going to be a Futurama Easter egg. I feel like there's okay. going to be, I a... want you to, I want you to find that and then point it out. Oh, gross. I'm trying to think of what other Easter egg like. Gross, gross. No, you don't. Ma- I'm not going to find it for you. <laughs> well, who said I was going to look? Like, I'm just going to wait till the internet finds it. <laughs> that that would be you finding it then, oh. if, as far as we go, because I will not care. But uh, I'm also I'm just trying to think of what other like. There's going to be. I mean, if there's a Star Wars reference, is that an Easter egg or is that a? I I don't know. Um. And so I don't think they can. I don't think they can do Star Wars because it's owned by Disney. Well, I mean, they're not going to have that. fucking Darth Vader like twerking out on a dance floor or something. It's going to be. I, I just like maybe a, a reference or something. George Lucas was super cool with everyone talking about Star Wars. Disney will not be. So I think everyone's going to avoid that shit. Fun fact too that I've learned about how George Lucas can essentially predict the future. He he took like a. Uh, four hundred thousand dollar paycheck cut or something from the first star wars movie to because he wanted the license direct for the uh merchandise 
Like he wanted to make the profits on merchandise. That he took a paycheck cut to keep the rights for merchandise, and it's now worth like yep. sixty billion dollars. Like just the merchandise stuff. Dude could predict the future. Okay, out for there. All right, so you can ask us questions at accidentallycasual@gmail.com. Uh, Matias and I hope I got your name right. Wants to know what we think about the game Minimal Effect. Have you seen Minimal Effect? I haven't. Have you? Yes. Ooh, go on. Watch the Minimal Effect trailer, and we will fast forward to what you have to th see about it. Uh, Minimal Effect. With A F F E C T. Yep. That looks so much like the Mass Effect shit. Oh my god, it's Mass Effect. This is literally Mass Effect 1. <laughs> I, f I completely forgot about this till he sent that email. Uh, apparently that game is coming out next year. It's an act it looks like... It reminds me of like Rick and Morty's doing the uh, the ve the Avengers or whatever they're... The Vindicators? Yeah, it's, it's a total ripoff on Mass Effect. I think... I think we'd be super into it. Oh my god! It looked, but what type of gameplay is it? Uh, it looks like a third-person cover shooter. Uh, okay. well, I don't all know I'm how seeing much... is like a cinematic kind of trailer. Nothing of gameplay. Okay. Is there? Is the, you is know the thing of gameplay? I, I don't know. I I don't know if what I saw was actually gameplay or if it was a third-person shooter thing. But you'll get in there. Oh, I get it. Holy shit. Minimal effect, mass effect. Yep. It's it's affect too, I think it's I, yeah. I say effect. It's affect. Um I there'll looked, be a, there'll um, be a link in the description box on this video. I looked up gameplay uh, that for you can it. Check out the, I'm not seeing anything of it. And also, I think the even, latest the latest trailer I saw some stuff that looked like gameplay. Even the I didn't like, see straight gameplay. The views but. of the trailer is only like thirteen thousand. Like it's not it's a sm this is a the, small the one game. I saw hit seventy. Ba I wanted to get your reaction on that. That that's good. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I I, I don't know how popular it's going to be. It looks very very niche. So, uh, but but it's something I would I would very much enjoy playing. I, I, I definitely want to check it game. out. I completely forgot about this game until I got the email. I'm like, oh yeah. I mean, it says a role playing game, so it is an RPG, but. I maintain that everything is an RPG. Oh. Okay, so if you have a question for us, uh, we're going to chat, probably chat about Minimal Effect as it comes out. Minimal Effect. I don't actually know how to pronounce it. I got uh, no prob I, I, That probably might be a game that we, we get more into. That seems like something that we would, we would really like. Just for the Mass Effect comparison. It, 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 it seems like it is a, like a self-aware parody exactly of it. But it looks exactly like a Mass Effect parody is what, what a Mass Effect parody game. I mean, there's there's even a direct joke of like, oh, it's not copyright. It's just off enough that it's not copyright, but it's at least I, I think that I saw that coming out 2020. I hope, hope it still comes out. I'm not sure if it's a joke or not either. <laughs> I mean, it is only that small like trailer thing of it, but I've seen a couple trailers, so. Uh, should we jump to the obscure Mass Effect character of the week? Sure. Okay. This week's obscure Mass Effect character of the week is Niftu Call, who you will not know unless you call him the Biotic God. Oh, he's the drunk, uh, Volus. He's the, I, I guess, stone, is it stoned or high? He's not high. What's he's the word you would use for being jacked up on a drug? I thought he was drunk. I don't think he was stoned. No, no, no. That's the specific mission is that these, uh, these, the Volus sold a mercenary group biotic enhancing powder that kind of made you insane. And so they tested it on him and he went, he went nuts. Oh, I thought he, he was, was not drunk. drunk. No, he is definitely not drunk. Oops. And he, he thinks he can kill everybody. There'll be a clip at the end of the show again. Quite po one of my more favorite minor Mass Effect characters. <laughs> I love every Volus in that game. I love every Volus. I really want to see what they look like inside that suit. Probably ridiculously gross. Well, they got glowing eyes. Like their eyes are very separated. 
their mouth. Yeah, is... I mean that, that's in the suit. They have to be in the suit because they live in a completely different environment. And it's, it's like too they're the it's kind of like the ta- and... uh, Koreans. A little bit like the Koreans, except way, way more extreme. Really, I thought the Koreans were like, if you sneeze no, on them, no, they'll no. die. They live. They live in like a sulfur atmosphere, man. So like they literally could not breathe. Koreans were just highly allergic to every microbe. It's just, yeah, the the Koreans, it's just like every single thing that was in the air would kill yeah. them. Yeah, ba- basically. But but the it'd be a, it's completely different makeup of the atmosphere for the Volus. Also, the the gravity on their planets actually it's different. But it's mainly the atmosphere is ridiculously thick and pressurized. And I think sulfur based, if I'm remembering that correctly. But I like and if you the call, uh, Elcor, how the Elcor like were slow and everything because the gravity on their planet was they, so high. Yeah, there aren't many Elcor characters. Well, yeah, the Elcor are they're, adorable. They're just, they are. We'll get into that. I, I there are a couple. We will get to a lot of these characters. I can think of a couple Elcor characters that would qualify. Uh, if you have a Mass Effect obscure character of the week you want to nominate, accidentallycasual at gmail dot com. Was Nifty, uh, was that Mass Effect 2 or was that Mass Effect 3? It's Mass Effect 2. It was the second one? Out of God. Is he in the third one then? Because they'll usually, like, do something of that. I don't think he is. There are Volus that come back and there are, like, there's one Asari. There's a minor Asari character that repeatedly shows up. Uh, and you, I think you can kill her in every single game. But That's I cool. believe he is only in the second one. If I'm wrong about that, I'll be slightly embarrassed. But I don't remember seeing him in the third game. He was and voiced. Yeah, it it is Mass Effect Two, and he was voiced by Mark Mir. Yep, and you can tell if you really listen to it. How many characters did Mark Mir voice? The voice a of lot. Male Shepard. I mean, they they it is. It's it's kind of common for like the main yeah I know people to also he's just really good at it, though yeah because they they are already like bought and have the person it's like hey can you say this one line or something for the side character or something like that the delivery of the i am a biotic god is just fantastic so yeah listen to that at the end of the show yeah i i put in stuff at the end of every show because i i can't stop all right if you have a an idea for the new mass effect game email us at accidentally casual gmail.com we'll go over that next week uh if you're looking for us on twitter i'm at mini sgc tucker is at appy tucker and we will be back next week yep, yep. recording a little bit early. And we will record before the Game Awards, and the show will come out afterwards, so we will not talk about it. Wait, wait, what? when are the Game Awards? The Game Awards literally come out like one or two hours before Cyberpunk. Because I, I don't I understand wonder if that, that the, might be a fun thing to do if we record a live thing of us go watching the Game Awards all right, the reason I don't want to do that, A, I've been to the Game Awards, and it's really boring. Like, really, well, really boring. Because we could also, like, react to the trailers. And... Yeah, and B, that would mean I would have work right after that, and I refuse to do that because I'm going to play Cyberpunk. Okay. And I'm, I'm not going to wait to play Cyberpunk. I'm just going to play it, and I'm just going to dive right in. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not doing anything like because, that. Because uh, that would be a fun thing to do, like when PlayStation has one of their expos or when there's E3 or PAX or something like that, and they... I think, it's, I think at some point we should do it. I don't think the Game Awards is the one to do it. you don't think the Game Awards is... Okay, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's and fair. And the, sec- I mean, the, the more important thing is I'd rather play Cyberpunk than, than work on a podcast extra. That's fair. So we're, we're recording a day early next time. Uh, too bad. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to Cyberpunk. Yeah, I mean a lot All of right. people are. And and to okay, I, I am so aware. There was one thing that we brought up last time of um like how- I was trying to give us the outro. Oh, okay, fair. Is is it short? Ah! All right, that's it. I'm cutting you off. <laughs> yeah.
biotic god. I think things, and they happen. Fear me, lesser creatures, for I am biotics made flesh. You need help. You need help. You stand before the mightiest biotic ever.